you're doing well. Hello? Hello, 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 hello. Hello? How's it going? How are you? Hello, Kiro. Hello, Bear. Boozak. As OBS tries to realize there's a game there. There it is. Aha! We're back! We're in! After a very, very long period of time. That being 22 hours. Um. We're back. Uh, quick recap of what happened last time. Uh, Maya is still on her uh, rejuvenating spiritual waterfall holiday. And a uh, young lady by the name of Emma came into our office and demanded that we defend her sister, who happens to be chief prosecutor for the area, who somehow we haven't met up to this point, um, who has been accused of and is admitting to a murder in the car park of the prosecutor's office in the trunk of Edgeworth's car with Edgeworth's knife two minutes after Edgeworth arrived in his car. Um, it's all a bit weird, but it's also Phoenix Wright, so, you know. Fell asleep in your last stream, it was very cosy. I'm glad you had a nice, well, hopefully you had a nice sleep. It could have been fitful and nightmarish, I don't know. Um, but I'm glad the vibes were nice. <laughs> this is fine. I have some running theories, uh, but my running theories tend to be either absolutely spot on or nowhere close. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna see how that goes. Um, other things that have happened, we have been introduced to a former detective now patrolman who thinks he's a cowboy, but he's actually just a guy from LA. Um, can't remember his name. There's also the lunch lady who is the witness um, to this murder happening. She is, uh, she delivers lunch to the office um, and also uh, is uh, the girlfriend of the security guard at the uh, car park. Um, so she was ostensibly visiting him while seeing what happened. Um, Jake Marshall, that's the yes, Marshall. Keeps calling prosecutors prospectors. It's a whole thing. <clears throat> Hi, Christy, you're alive! Hello! I'm glad you're alive. Hopefully you're also feeling great. But uh, I understand there might be some illness involved. Some sniffles. Hopefully the sniffles go soon. Uh, was there anything else? Oh yes, the murder, the victim of the murder was, I think, also a detective? Maybe? Um, Goodman? He looked like a good man. He reminded me a bit of Aziraphale. Sniffles are almost over, thank you. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, other stuff. Yes, uh, the, I think the last thing we learned was that, uh, the sister, the one being accused of murder, phoned the other sister, Emma, who's 15 years old and wants to be a scientific investigator. Don't know what that means. Um, but she, she taught us to rotate objects, which is much, very useful. Anyway, um, she phoned... The elder sister phoned the younger sister uh, like three minutes after the death uh, and then hung up immediately. That was the last thing we learned. It was a de detective and his name was Goodman, yes. Uh, so we've done all of our preliminary investigations. It is now... I think we have now just entered the... Um, uh, the trial, not the, well, the, the sort of preamble or in the uh, defendant lobby or whatever. Um, but yeah, we are trying to once again defend somebody who claims they did it. <laughs> so it's going fine. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, also, that was the other thing. Uh, when the girl came to us, when uh, Emma came to us looking for legal representation, she was actually looking for Mia because Mia and the elder sister, who again, whose name I've forgotten, um, were in school together. Uh, they're different years, but um, they knew it. They, they knew each other, and they knew of each other, and they knew, you know. Lana, yes, Lana told her younger sister, if you ever need legal representation for a defense, go to Mia. Unfortunately, Mia's dead. Um, so, bit of an issue. So, we, we are the, the stand-in. <laughs> but I think it's going okay. Um, also, Emma's an idiot, but that's fine. I just joined the club, really. <clears throat> so. Oh, that was another thing. Um, so this all happened in the back of Edgeworth's car. 
in the parking lot, apparently. Um, Edgeworth had just come back from the police station two minutes prior to the uh, claimed time of the murder. He had a ticket stub for the uh, parking uh, lot. Parking... What do we call it? Car park. Um, <laughs> so he knows exactly when he got in there. Um, but prior to that, he was at the police station receiving a reward uh, for being king prosecutor this year. Basically, employee of the month. Um, and he seemed rather annoyed about it. So... Uh, he is also the one having to do the prosecution for this case, because normally that would go to the top prosecutor, but the top prosecutor is the accused. So he has to do it instead. Oh, and there, there's been lots of rumours going around about Edgeworth because he's a, a sly shady so-and-so, um, but the it is alleged that those rumours started with Lana, um, who is the person now being accused of murder. So it's all a bit uh, tangled at the moment. Me is the only one with a brain cell, and Maya is not currently here. Yes. <clears throat> only now starting to figure out why this case might be so long. Hmm. Is it because I have to keep trying to work out voices? That's nothing new. February the 23rd, 9.34am, District Court, Defendant Lobby number 2. Oh, there we go. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Uh, frankly, there are still a lot of... grey areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big grey area. Don't worry about me. No matter what the outcome, I'm ready to accept my fate. You're stand, sounding a lot like Edgeworth right now. And he was an idiot who was wrong. So, we'll work this out. I believe in you, sis! Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yeah? A defense attorney should never believe their client. <gasps> The defendant is called to the trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Guy, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. I, I was gonna say you remind me a lot of Edgeworth, but sure. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. Oh, she has a hand injury as well. I forgot about that. Hmm. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. My first trial without a Faye helping me. <laughs> I forgot that last name was Faye. No one's gonna bail me out this time. No, oh, hi. I'll be all alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. Sure. She's 15 years old. And it shows. <laughs> February the 23rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number nine. <gasps> Tonight's the last episode of Inside Number Nine. And we're in courtroom number nine. Ah! Court is now in session for the trial of Ms. Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth? It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. Oh yeah, we, we've just not taken on any cases because we don't want to work. <laughs> I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of proceedings today, Mr. Wright. As I told you as much in bed. Hmm? I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. Also, she wants to work with the police and like the prosecuting attorneys, so she's a massive fanboy of Edgeworth. It's fine, we're not taking it personally. <laughs> and also, Phoenix shouldn't actually be a lawyer. <laughs> Look, he's lucked his way this far. It's fine. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. His opening statement didn't actually mention the murder. So that's interesting. <laughs> the prosecution calls its first witness, Ms. Angel Starr, to the stand. 
the Cough Up Queen. I still don't quite understand that name, but we'll go with it. Hmm, haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Ho oh, ho, caviar! I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. Ah, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, voices. Hers is quite just a high-pitched Edgeworth, isn't it? <laughs> That's why I'm getting confused. Ah, Juicer! Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Hmm. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty it hurts. You've been poisoned, sir. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Caviar. Name, profession, now. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry uh, up. Mm. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh-huh. What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Ms. Angelstar was a special investigator with the police. How have we not known that till now? Oh, this is a massive tangled web. <laughs> she was a first-rate homicide detective. But what? Miss Star is a detective? Mm. Ah -ha! Uh, uh, I know who you are. Cough up? Cough up Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. I read the cough up queen stuff as a reference to her ability to make people cough up information to her, which is a phrase for surrendering something like information. Yeah, because she didn't say it. She buried the lead. There's a lot of lead burying going on here. I think that's basically this entire series. Boom. V -v -v Very well. Y y you may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. Oh, here we are. Maps. Maps, maps, maps. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office divided... Ugh, I can speak. <laughs> I'm a professional. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor's spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block, in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness, and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Parking lot floor plans, thank you. With the parking lot with Edgeworth's car. She tried to drive away in Edgeworth's car two minutes after he arrived. This does not sound suspicious at all. Parking lot floor plans added to the court record. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. D d d wait, are they talking about me? Even the judge is against me on this one. Then again, he's an idiot. We know this. Right. Witnesses account. Somehow I always knew a day like this would come. 
I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend, where I sensed something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. There! Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. She... Hmm. Bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. Hmm. As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than... The point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? Uh, I, I'm still thinking about that. It, it's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Well, the pointy tip, as opposed to the blunt tip on the other end. I, have a, I do have an issue. I'm not sure there's enough information here to be very specific about the issue, but we'll see. Uh, always do a day like this would come. On my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. I'm gonna press on this quickly. This boyfriend, he's the detective. No. Not that boyfriend, the security guard. The that boyfriend? Y you have several? Yes. This boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? The yet another boyfriend is still open for there. Yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. I I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Note to self: the judge had to think before replying. That's the first actual piece of observation she's made. <laughs> that wasn't complete nonsense. The security guard room is in the lot in A block. Okay, that's that's what I'm. If she was if she was in A block and the crime happened in A block, how was she looking through the fence? That's the thing that caught my mind. It's up in the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Which Emma helpfully thought was a cafe. Incidentally, did you bring your own yeah, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. Oh, okay, so she wasn't. She was in B-Block when she witnessed the crime. Okay. Now she says it. Sent something, blah, 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 through the wire fence. I'm gonna, still gonna look at it. By Garish Carr, you mean Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. But, but Mr. Edgeworth's. Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's, wasn't it? Indeed it was. Oh, no, no slam, nice. Hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you, you were sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. She's telling the truth. We're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. We're dealing with Edgeworth here. I, I need something more substantial than that. Hmm. Can you tell us what the suspect was doing when you saw her? The prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Still gonna point stuff out. Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Uh, <clears throat> uh yes, <laughs> that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. Bang. Y you can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I mean a person. Hmm? Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. So, the defendant was holding a knife. What the? Egg? And kill an egg? They're an assassin. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Eggy leggy. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime, because there was a net in the way for you. You did see her raise the knife to strike, though. Hmm. The defense has a point. 
Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Yes, the next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I see. It, it, it's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Mm, scientifically speaking, Miss Star's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. <laughs> Don't smile like that! Okay, so this isn't a deliberate failure moment, so there is something to find. Uh, let's have a look at our stuff. So what do we have? We have our badge, obviously. We have Goodman's ID. This was found at the crime scene quite far away from the car. Which was interesting. Um, we have the King of Prosecutors trophy, which Edgeworth won. Um, yes, given to Edgeworth, King of Prosecutors at the police department on the day of the murder. Murder weapon is usually in Edgeworth's toolbox. No tra traces of victim's blood, no prints. Parking stub, so Edgeworth arrived three minutes before the murder happened, apparently, at quarter past five. Um, <laughs> we... <laughs> We have a uh, wobbly mascot standing outside the police station made by Detective Gumshoe because he hasn't got anything to do because the chief uh, detective has basically said you're not supposed to be working on this, so uh, do something else. So he made a, a fun little mascot um, and it's adorable and he did great and I want to give him a hug. Um, we have the autopsy report, which is very uh, wibbly wobbly in its time of death. Uh, death due to loss of blood, one knife wound died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. So 5.15 seems reasonable. That is within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. However, given that the body was found in a trunk, um, you know, could have been killed elsewhere, driven here, and then this person found them in the thing and pulled out the knife for some reason, and that's what they saw. That's going to be my assumption. It's never going to be straightforward, is it? We also found this. A memo in the car truck. 6-7-S, 6-7-S, 12 we're not entirely sure what that means, um, but we have it. This is the mobile phone um, of Lana Sky, the accused. The last call was made three minutes after the uh, apparent murder um, and was to Emma. Uh, and we also have the floor plans here. Let's slide around. Swish, swish. This wall in that security room. Interesting line of sight there. Um, so, uh, <laughs> my first thought was how could she see the thing if she was in the security booth? But she wasn't in the security booth. She was in the B parking lot, so she would have seen it through the net. Um. The other day like this would come was on my way to, way to on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend when it sensed something. Perhaps it was my finally honed detective's intuition at work. I want to know a little bit more about you being a detective. You sensed something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? It felt like. Hmm. How would you say? Oh yes. It was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chock full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. Uh, speaking of a detective's intuition, yeah, wasn't the victim Mr. Bruce Goodman also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. Uh, a young cheese? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets, a greenhorn. So you're back chatting with your mum for a bit. I guess the people are being compared to cheese for some reason. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Then I must be hard, yellowed, and sharp as a tack. I... More like kind of blue veiny and smells a little bit. Yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match. In any case, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Jeez! <laughs> we got the quote. Jeez, it's useful already. Okay. Yeah, so through the wire fence I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. 
let me have a look at that again. This is this is very specific thing that was mentioned, and I just want to make sure it's a thing. So she was here. Here's a fence. Prosecutor standing next to a car. I don't see a contradiction in that. If she was in B. You put a who was holding a knife in her right hand. She thrust the pointy tip of the knife into, de into Detective Goodman's chest. Hang on a minute. That was a chess win. How I lost already. Um. No, the necklace is supposed to be a flower, but now you see an octopus. I, th I think last time we were talking about it being a savaloy that's been sort of cut at the bottom. Made into a flower. Um. How am I already lost? Uh, the prince. Okay, this isn't going to tell us anything. That's definitely not going to tell us anything. Murder weapon. Usually in the toolbox. No of blood, no prince. Why this? This is part of our evidence. <laughs> Why is this going to be relevant at some point? <clears throat> now what now, Savaloy? Like a sausage. Um, Edward said it again. Well, the, the murder took place in the in the prosecutor's car park, in the back of Edgeworth's car, with his knife. Although a witness claims that it was someone else who did it. So. One knife wound died within an hour and a half at 4 p.m. Let me ask about this. Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Uh, oh, hang on, have we already done this? Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Yeah, because it's, it's his knife. We done that. Egg surprise, we're talking about murdering eggs. We've done this. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Um, thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Have we pressed on that yet? I think we have. Why you didn't stop the crime, yes, okay. That's why I didn't remember, because it wasn't relevant. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. What does this mean? <laughs> I'm gonna press on everything. Wondering what you meant too, the other word for sausage. Oh, it's Savaloy. It's it's like a I don't know, it's a small spicy sausage that's got like a red skin, is why I went for it. Anyway, they're nice, you have my chips. <clears throat> How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence for crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. <laughs> the lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. <laughs> Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim. Swoosh. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Mm. Miss Star, do, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator, and if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I'm a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. <laughs> yes, unbiased. I hate prosecutors. They're all scum. Anyway, the prosecutor did it. <laughs> Stupid world. <clears throat> Uh, you're back on your diet, and uh, don't want to call it that, but don't know what else to call it. A diet is just a, a plan of food. Everyone has a diet, it's just what they eat. Uh, and you're planning onigiri for snacks, so bento insp is very yes for you right now. Ooh. 
but this, this, this is very bento themed. They even in, uh, incorporated it into the fact that this has been relocated to America. So she had a whole spiel of like how this is being imported and it's very fancy. Um, have we talked about this? Yes, we have. I'm on the second level so you can see everything. Okay, so you can probably can see over that wall. Yeah, visitor parked in people. I'm gonna have hamburgers! Uh, find a home detective intuition through the wire fence. The garish car that was that was just talking about the car. I wanted to wear the fence. Uh, Chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. I think we pressed on everything. I keep forgetting what it is. Some of these are just not relevant. Yeah, that's just talking about the knife, not the holding bit. All the bits I want to know information about, they're not talking about. So <clears throat> it was donuts. Yeah, the Pokemon Onigiri thing. It was the jam jelly donuts. Gotta love these jelly donuts. Um, <sighs> am I missing something? I mean, I am missing something because I don't know the answer to the puzzle, and there is an answer. Uh, murder weapon usually in the drawer stores traces of the victim's blood. No prints. the stupidest thing to point out here. <laughs> this happened at 12 past 5 and she's talking about delivering a lunchbox. <laughs> Is that how this starts? <laughs> I'm gonna save because I'm not confident in that. <laughs> but I'm gonna try. <laughs> this is the thing, right? <laughs> or is it just like, you know? Do we do it with this? No, okay. Look, it was a contrad- I'm looking for a contradiction, all right? <laughs> uh, oh, bloody hell. Why? I'm stuck on the very first puzzle of the game. Did I press every statement? I think so, right? So let, let's go, let's go back through. Uh, always knew this day would come. That's because, oh, I'm a, I used to be an investigator, and I have a keen sense of crime, and prosecutors are all awful. On the way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Which boyfriend is that? She has many boyfriends. Uh, that's what I sent something. I find a home detective's intuition at work. Uh, prosecutors are all assholes. Uh, through the wire fence, saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. She has to park in B block. Uh, the chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. The knife is the one that belongs to Edgeworth and is about four inches long. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Uh, I can't remember what was said about this because it was irrelevant. Um, so I'm pretty sure I have pressed on everything. Um, <clears throat> I thought she was wearing a cap. Looked directly at the screen for the first time, saw the onigiri. Yeah, she's got little, little rice balls on her hat. Um... So I'm pretty sure I pressed on everything. I'm just, I'm completely missing what we need to be doing here. Um, I want her to give a time. <laughs> she refuses. Um, we were also given this, which we haven't used yet. The only, the only other thing I'm thinking is, like, from B block with these cars here, could you see behind this car? I don't know. I think you probably could from the right angle, but... I don't know, it doesn't hurt to try, I've saved. Um... Oops. 
this evidence clearly yeah <laughs> Oh my god, I'm doing real bad, I'm sorry. Um... What's the contradiction? Let me press on this very quickly. The knife... Four inches long, it's your knife. That's about right. Prosecutors are all birth organs. Boiling an egg, so then we talk about eggs for a bit. Something should happen when you press it. Okay, so I evidently missed the pressing somewhere. But he didn't try and stop this crime. The next moment brought down the murder weapon. Okay, let's just let's just go through, press on everything. So I might have missed something. How did you know? Methods are ugly and twisted. Thank you, I am ugly and twisted. Getting off a detective. Used to be an investigator, was laid off. Prosecutors are worms. What's that? On my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. We're now gonna talk about several boyfriends. Second level, you can see everything from there. The room with the security sign. If you can see everything from there, why aren't they a witness? I think your lunchbox is by car visitor in B block. Where she witnessed the crime. And <laughs> that knife has not been used to stab, it's been next to a stab. <laughs> uh finding her detective's intuition. Premonition of the murder. Pumpkin seeds, yep. He was like a young cheese. Smelly, smelly cheese. Through the wire fence, garish car. Would this be Edgeworth's car? Yes, it was by now. Rumba, rumba, rumba. What an odd case. They're more than 30 feet away. This is new. I don't know why it's changed. <laughs> Witness, in your testimony you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. Finally, points it out. <laughs> Took a while. <laughs> you might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. Swish. I'll fry you like a fritter, crispy on the outside and chewy on the inside. Hey, it's me. That, that was inspiring. It was a threat. <laughs> I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You would cry plagiarism? I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch, lady, but my instincts are honed. A, a, a photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap, I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Hi, Ragdoll, it's going fine. It took me ages to convince Phoenix to point out the obvious. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? <laughs> Think again. Hmm. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Moment of the crime as photographed by Angel Star. Uh-oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So, what was the defendant doing at the time? Holding a knife in her right hand. And she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. At the time, she was holding a knife, and yet the picture doesn't show her holding a knife. Hmm. <laughs> 
Lady, you scare me. <laughs> Anyone with a uh, star last name is bad news. I know, look at Ringo. <clears throat> Why is she wearing the jacket? Hmm. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. <laughs> Holding a knife in her right hand. I'm, I'm gonna... Objection! Try this. The music stopped. And you witnessed this. You saw Miss Skye stab the victim with a knife. As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm. I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this. Look at this photograph. Keeps happening. This is the photograph you took at the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? Hmm. 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 <clears throat> Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. That had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. <laughs> you get the proper pff, objection. Yet it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Objection! And how can you tell that? Probably by the blood on the coat. Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on that chief prosecutor's coat. But, but it's a black and white photograph. Ah, yes, it's hard to tell, but that could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. Uh, no problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you gonna just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Uh, you got a better idea? We have an objection? <laughs> I don't know if we have an objection. <laughs> I'm gonna save. All the saving. I mean, it could be blood, but it also could not be blood. That's my objection. If you can object to say that it was blood, I can object to say it isn't, right? <laughs> That's my thought process anyway. Bang! Wait! That contradicts what the witness said in her testimony, does it? Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Okay, we're going with that instead. I thought we were already been over that, but sure. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. Then update your testimony. Th that's it? If you run out of lunch, your order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Skye was cold, calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. But premeditated? How do you know? Look at the Chief Prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, uh, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh... If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Uh... Got a point. <laughs> Objection! I have no problem with this. <laughs> Allergies. Hmm? These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. Thank you. The murder was planned, the rubber gloves prove it. Is that all we've got that's new? Yes, okay. Well, let's press on it, see what happens. Bang! What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves? Like, driving gloves. Objection! The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do a murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking it was all planned. 
Uh, she can prove this claim, the trial's already over. Uh, I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It, it's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Stara's testimony is flawless. You said that already as well. Keeps talking about pressing. <laughs> yeah, with a knife in the trunk, not her own weapon. Hmm. That is an interesting point. Uh, is there anything else? Yeah, seems a bit weird. Also, a premeditated murder that re re relies on... Oh, I don't know. I could have just done any card. The, the, the lock was forced open, I suppose. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go with it. That seems a reasonable one. The music stopped. There we go. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell lunchboxes for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. Most with this case. Bloody bad weapon, a red car, all belonging to the prosecutor there. The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? I mean, a prosecutor's bad people. Bang. The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Skye planned this murder, and that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing, the murder weapon? Ew. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car, a car that arrived three minutes before the murder. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're gonna plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Oh. She's throwing lunches everywhere. Order, order, order! Great, now the tide's turning in our favour. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister is as good as free. Oh, tap, tap, tap. Smiley face. <laughs> right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. You're not clever, Edward. <laughs> but what? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. <laughs> I like how Edgeworth knows exactly what we're thinking, because of course we're husbands. Um, but, uh, but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. <laughs> the defendant, Lana Skye, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing... Bang. I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you? My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now. <clears throat> yeah, food! Food! This is a fun little lunchbox with a cute character on it. <clears throat> are we not dating anymore? It's, Edgeworth made it very clear in the last stream that he likes to keep his personal and uh, business life separate. So, in court, we are prosecutor and defendant. That has no bearing on what happens at home. Um, Angel's deduction. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. So you're already going into opinion. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. One stab wound. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound like a does, uh, does sound a lot like a premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? 
In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Wow, Emma said something smarter than the judge. <laughs> They're still dating, it just makes them even more insufferable to work with. <laughs> salmon, potatoes, and peas. There was a salmon one earlier, actually. So yeah, salmon swirl, as I recall. Uh, I'm going to press on stuff anyway, because it's fun to get dialogue. Boom! You've said that, but you haven't told us how you know. That's what I'm about to tell you, rookie! <laughs> I believe what she's just said was a mere prelude to the story she's about to tell. Try not to interrupt her again. It's my cross-examination is what I do. Rookie? Huh. Never interrupt a storyteller. It's like pulling a bun out of the oven half-baked. Something's half-baked here, all right, and it's you. Try not to confuse the defense, witness. They're not very quick on their feet. Now, why did you believe the suspect had intentions to murder the victim? Her actions speak for themselves. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. Cute. Smarter than the judge is a low bar. <laughs> True. But let's face it, Emma is dealing with very low bars. You have no proof that Miss Sky called him there. You have no proof that she didn't. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, thoughts? There is no record of a call made on the defendant Miss Lana Sky's phone. She might have written him a letter. Come on, you could have tried public phone first, at least. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness? Why do you... Oh. Why do you think it was the suspect who summoned the victim that day? I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Why? Bang. What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't, that's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie? I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? Uh, how am I supposed to know? See? We agree there is a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels. Don't you agree? Uh, I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. This judge isn't very good with metaphors. Or anything thinking. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. The thing of proving something couldn't happen. Schrodinger's lunchbox, yes. Uh, well, well, we'll just head straight to the autopsy report here. One the knife wound. You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? And then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. Hmm? What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that the death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Ah, uh ha! -huh. You're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. I was... I was <laughs> What a hunk! He's my hero, really! What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness. The... You got the crime scene set, right? How many lunches do you have and why do they all relate to this murder? <laughs> Seems you're premeditated. Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Hmm. A red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. A red muffler. Yes, like a scarf. The chief prosecutor always wears one around her neck. So she can be easily hanged at a moment's notice, I suppose. She's right. The guy was wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? But wait. Isn't it odd that you mistook that for splattered blood? 
Well, people often mistake my beard for a bib. <laughs> I was wondering where I was going with that. He doesn't seem too happy about that situation, but, uh, yeah. A judge with a bib. That's why this place feels so much like a kindergarten. <laughs> and that's why I hate wearing scarves like that. Yeah. Actually, I do think I saw some traces of blood on her chest. However, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Hmm. Apparently, Miss Star isn't entirely sure of her own testimony. Mr. Wright, this is our chance! Uh, chance for what, I wonder? Miss Star has turned out to be such a short-tempered as she... There. Yeah, turns out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. She has as long a temper as I have an attention span for reading. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off. The short wick burns out the fastest. That's a scientific fact. I wonder. It did depend on the size of the candle. I was thinking the same thing, and that honestly worries me. I mean, add more wax, and even a really short wick will burn longer. Hmm. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. Edgy has a bib, too. Edgy has an actual bib. He has several layers of bib. Right, intended to kill. Call the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. <clears throat> Chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Red muffler looked like blood. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Hmm. Hang on a minute. He's not wearing it though. <laughs> I better check that. I'm gonna save just in case, because I don't trust this game. No muffler. No muffler, no uh, reliable witness. As the old saying goes. Objection! Urban jump jump junctions. Objection! Oh. Ms. Starr, I demand an explanation. <laughs> there. The witness is clear they're not suited for detective work. <laughs> Edgeworth, stop stealing our objections. <laughs> this is a new trait for you. <laughs> Trying to jump in on our clever detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself with this photograph. Look at it. Huh? But, but that... it can't be. Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations! Perhaps you've finally found your true calling in life. Hmm. Harsh words, but good. He's here for the drama. He doesn't care about the call. <laughs> in the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chopped lever? But, but it was there. A scarf. No, not that, but something red, really. Well, now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude. But back to business. What? Right. Very well, witness, continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Hmm. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of our testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. <laughs> Edgykins, do you want to eat dinner alone tonight? <laughs> Again, separation of work and pleasure. <clears throat> we, we had an agreement. We do not get upset in our personal lives about how work went. <laughs> Apprehending the suspect. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made an escape, made two escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. She's probably running to the phone, if I had to guess. You are quite determined about the scarf, aren't you? I strike like a stick and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. 
Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. Uh, no thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. That's true of everyone, Emma, but sure. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Uh, an oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you will. Well, the oil barrels are on the other side of the partition, but whatever. Um, Finks would just complain about a guy at work being a total dick to her husband at home. <laughs> Game. Click. Go. There we go. Uh, Subject so attempted to run behind the partition off to her side. Just chat about some things. Where is this partition on the floor plan? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. It's obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained her rights, and arrested her on the spot. How did you get there from B? You say quickly, were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details? Yes, but I'm gonna say. <laughs> there was a fence, right? Is there a door in the fence? Yeah, she was in B block. I'd like to see this on the floor plans, just to be safe. The Lunchland car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B Block. So, you witnessed the murder from here. That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, mister? Yes, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing! The cop up queen, lunch lady, athlete, indeed. I would have taken her a, it would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gotten my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? Because she wasn't trying to get away. She mentioned the muffler, did she? She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remembered exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard was her say the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. A phone? She can't mean. Uh... Say. Presumably Emma. <laughs> Calling Emma. But... Is that something we want to incriminate our friend about? I don't know. I'm going to ask further. By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. N no, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? What happened to good testifying? Right. You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. And a cell phone updated in the court record. The word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma at 5.18. Did Emma bring her a muffler or something? Hmm. She has it in the cell. Hmm. Covering up her neck or something? I don't know. <clears throat> I saw it all. How she tried the phone on the wall but had to use her cell instead. I mean... Quickly caught her, blah, 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 after the attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. You, you were saying she was trying to escape, but if she's trying to escape, why would she go to a phone? <laughs> that sounds like trying to 
phone the police, maybe. Like, <laughs> hey, get here, someone's been killed. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! I was going to ask the same thing. I'll only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. Hmm. And during that time... Oh, and during that time, you climbed over the chain-link fence. Boom. Smash. Then I boldly grabbed her arm. The chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this. Huh? What is it, Mr. Wright? I mean, there's a wall there. Saw it all. Dave. <laughs> there's a six-foot-high wall there. So either she has to uh, say that she hadn't, didn't see it because there was a six foot high wall there, or that she, she climbed over a nine foot tall fence to get there, in which case she couldn't have got there in time. But that's my assumptions. Um, da -da -da -da. It's this one, right? Parking lot floor plans. Objection! Objection! Bang! Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. Objection! Objection! The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Hmm. Well, well, mister? This is a fatal contradiction in your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me and I'll make you cough it all up. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't possibly have seen this guy making that phone call. Huh. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. What? <laughs> Yeah, it definitely doesn't have any grudges against anyone. <laughs> order, order. What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. <laughs> pointy, pointy. <laughs> he was proud of that. <laughs> hmm. Objection. Objection. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question. Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about where she saw it, I'm going to say. I think she probably did see her going to the phone and that it didn't work, but I don't think she saw it from B block. I think she was in A block. That's how she managed to get there that quickly. But I am going to say... <laughs> With all the coughing up, yeah. It's <laughs> euphemistic coughing up. I think it would be bad for a lunch lady to be named after coughing things up. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go with where she saw it. <clears throat> Miss Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie. I see. But, say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean, point, Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Objection! Objection! A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if ever I heard one. Objection! objection. Counter-objection! Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Don't say that. You just, just, don't call it a lie, Phoenix. <laughs> Bang. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All well, the testimony we've heard up to now points in one direction. The place from where Miss Star witnessed this crime was here. I'm assuming. <laughs> well, no, actually, because she had to have seen the back of the car. One of these cars? 
I don't know. <laughs> I want to say the security room. The security room is high enough to see over the wall, no? It might be high enough to see something over the wall, but maybe not everything. And so she's sort of improvising on it. She has a boyfriend in the security room. We know this. Yeah, it's high enough to see, but I don't think it's high enough to see everything. So I think maybe that's our point of like, how could she have seen everything clearly when there was a six foot high wall in the way? That's what I'm going to. We'll see. Take that. Take that. Boom. Spam. This is the only place where she could have been. The, the security guard room. Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Mm -mm, not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime, and the back of the partition, is here. Remember in your testimony, you said... You brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? I'm still confused at the fact that it was lunch at quarter past five. Well, mister? Huh? How many years have I been getting the better of men? To think that the tables could be turned. Today a man has gotten the better of Angel Star. I shoot. Order, order. Witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said that she saw the crime from the security guard station. Wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. A photograph now taken from the side that she wasn't on. That's interesting. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it up, Edgeworth. <laughs> Bang. <clears throat> that, that truth still stands. Objection. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So, tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? But me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? Uh, the angle of view to the crime. I, I, maybe this is an old photograph. Because she couldn't have taken that photograph at the time because she was in the wrong position. So she has this old photograph and like, hmm, if I could set things up in such a way that it looks like later on she's found with a body and I can say I took this photograph then and it's like, ah, I got proof that she was doing this or something. That's my, that's going to be my assumption. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to, yeah, ang angle is, is the thing. So that she can claim the photograph was taken at the time. Why? The angle at which she, sh she saw the crime occur would change. The angle? What do you mean? Uh, uh, um, well, the security guard station is on the second floor, and, uh, she would have sort of a more 3D view of the crime. And this is important why? Uh... Mm. Phoenix, I'm trying to- I've, I've explained to you what, why this is important. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to reconsider, Mr. Wright. Okay, fine, Phoenix is an idiot. <laughs> I'm going to reload just because Phoenix is an idiot. doesn't mean I am. All the, all the reloading where I was an idiot, that was that's unrelated. But this particular one, I'm reloading fairly. Um, this, oh, I didn't mean to actually click on it. Um, it changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. I clicked on that by accident. Whoops. Objection. Well, Edward seems to think it's important. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection. Objection! It's 30 feet in one story. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the, t is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Hmm? 
Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime, where you arrested Miss Sky? Huh? Well, witness. You... Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The, the quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass-walled station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. So you ran all the... Mm. <laughs> That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking in B-Block. That's quite a detour. But you've taken the picture at the time of the murder. Probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime, so the photo was now taken five minutes afterwards. F -f five minutes? Boys and Barry. Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. No, you don't. Because if this photograph was taken five minutes afterwards, we have a we have a, on log <laughs> the fact that she made a phone call <laughs> behind that partition just before you apprehended her three minutes after it happened. I swear it! I swear it on my finest plastic spork! You, you have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Yes. But I don't know how the game wants me to present it. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna do our best. There is a contradiction here. That apparently this character was apprehended just after something that happened a long time before the photo was taken just after the murder happened. <laughs> which is an impossible timeline. <laughs> I'm gonna raise an objection. objection. Bang! Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You can make a pasta in that amount of time, if you like it al dente. I've got lunchboxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. Mm -mm -mm. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with the five minutes, Your Honor? Well, uh, I, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! Did, don't get the wrong idea, I didn't kill anyone. This game's both smarter and dumber than you, that's fair. But you have the instincts of a killer. You wouldn't run! But this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She had even... She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. You... Yeah! Well then, it seems we come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright! Th that... Uh, that was too close. It's your entire profession, Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Hold it! Squid again. Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me. And I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What was that? There's another one of her trick lunchboxes. My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Whoa, a triple decker. Bang. Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. <laughs> God, this 
bribery, judge. <laughs> Bribed by lunchboxes in public. This is embarrassing for you. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lunchland motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she gonna pull out of her lunchbox this time? Decisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's, and the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. B what? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Objection! Objection. Witness, what, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. Boom. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is legal evidence, at least for the time being. I is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. No one told me before when I've been stealing stuff, but sure, whatever. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm? Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. There's a face. <laughs> you need more sleep, Edgeworth? Could at least study some evidence law, really. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Victim's shoe, white enamel shoe, bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lana Sky. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. He's having a day, yes. <laughs> I agree with that face. <laughs> I do like it, like, when I was going into this, I assumed it would be like, oh, the everything's sort of stacked up against you, you have the prosecution and they know what they're doing and they've got all their stuff on, on board and you've got to find the contradictions in statements and so on and so forth. I was not expecting a system where it's like, t t everyone versus the witness. <laughs> like... Edgeworth is having as, as little fun as me in this particular situation. <laughs> Very silly. Um, decisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. Explain! Why did you lie about those five minutes? Now, I guess you could say, I just wanted to people to look at the results. The results? How many times do I have to say this? I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim before my very own eyes. Compared to that, a five minute blank seems nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? Don't make me laugh. We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of the vile lot known as prosecutors. Falsified evidence, arranged testimonies, erasing and manipulating evidence. When you fight monsters, you need to use every trick in the book. This, when the suspect is admitting she did it? <laughs> yeah, he's kind of unnecessary. I bet when it's like this, both sides getting fed up because of the BS witnesses and testimonies, you yeah. But false testimony is the most despicable crime of all, Miss Star. Let's just get this over with. And now to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? No, you didn't. Why not? <laughs> you found this shoe at the scene of the crime. 
I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. I wanted to make myself useful while I was waiting for the police to arrive. He didn't pick up the wallet. So, like an ill-trained pooch, you snuck off with a shoe. I was afraid someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe was my secret weapon if that sh should happen. See this fashionable basket I have here? It carries more than lunchboxes, gentlemen. I'm happy for you and your lunchbox bag, really. <laughs> In any case, you removed valuable evidence from the scene of the crime. Now, tell us what you did next. An unreliable witness with a grudge removed evidence from the scene of the crime and then claims that the blood was on there at the time of the scene of the crime <sighs> and had it checked by presumably another boyfriend <laughs> who could not possibly have a bias in checking this. Uh, I remember seeing on YouTube like some things of like, real lawyers react to Phoenix Wright cases. I imagine they'd just heads immediately catch fire trying to keep up with this. <laughs> Two types of blood. So, you brought it to the forensics department. If you're going to submit something as evidence in your court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensics expert. And she got away with her little coup because she used to be a detective. The shoe does not appear to have blood does appear to have blood stains on it. Sorry, I haven't got my glasses. Well, the man was stabbed, after all. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman. As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. Hold! Boom. You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie. Huh? Well, speak up! Uh, well, blood comes in four types, A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. Yeah, we deserve that, look. Yeah, we deserve that. <laughs> yeah, we deserve that. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can't differentiate between millions of types with all the blood tests out there, which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood down to just one person. Or so I hear. Th th that's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA retest results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone's but Ms. Lana Skies. Hmm. So the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. Ashes to ashes. 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 Well, that's a good omen. Hi, Doc! <laughs> hey, Dom. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. Oh, I was afraid he was going to say that. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. Not flawless. Beyond a reasonable doubt, but not flawless. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. <laughs> And you ordered the pepper fish guts, right? What? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with this shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? I don't know. Is there a problem with the shoe? I mean, how did how did Lana Sky's blood get on there? I mean, presumably it's the hand injury, but how did the hand injury happen? Right? That's left out of the testimony. At the very least, I want it on the testimony. <clears throat> anyway, Doc, do you want anything explained? <laughs> You're good. Allure is bulletproof, apparently. Nice. Uh, did you examine it? N no. Can we do that now? We can. All right. I forgot about the examining thing. It's the whole gimmick. Um. Here's a shoe. Here's some blood. Uh, I also changed it. You can change the uh, the binding. Oh, there's blood on the other side as well. Uh, check. <clears throat> this blood! It's my sister's, right? It appears so. Lana's right hand was bandaged when I saw her in jail. She must have cut herself at the time of the crime. 
Poor sis! And now the blood on the bottom, which is interesting. How do you... Hmm. Ah! There's blood here too! On the sole of the shoe? It's gotta be the victim's. He must have stepped in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood! It's horrible! Hmm. This blood might be an important clue. Well, he said it might be an important clue, so I'm gonna go yes. <laughs> There's a problem! If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes, you're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now, but you couldn't take the heat, could you? Bang. Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. It, it's it's the underside. May, yeah, <laughs> I actually don't know, but he seemed quite intent that it was, so I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> Take that. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm. Indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. Bang. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe? Is there no blood on the top? Um. Is there any blood in this picture? <laughs> Doesn't look like any blood in this picture. <laughs> yeah. That seems pretty... Did the witness threaten to assault the lawyer? The witness has threatened to assault everybody at this point. Um, <laughs> with the possible exception of the judge. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna present this. The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't any bloody footprints found at the scene of the crime? Aha! Uh -huh. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. Objection. Objection. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Objection. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order. Well, witness. What? Huh? I, um... Great going, Mr. Wright. Uh, but it's true that the lack of a footprint isn't a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh. That's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright. Think. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I do. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? Hold it. Ooh, tap, tap, tap. <laughs> I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Why has this lady not been held in contempt? Because the judge is a fool. <laughs> the judge got bribed with a lot of lunchboxes. Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, that one. A leopard woman. <laughs> It's the second time I've tr tried to make that noise and it hasn't worked. <laughs> I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Hmm? Oh, that. Hmm. I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness, 
W well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum tipped over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. W water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. Bang. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her. Ah! Ah! Have we not got a less crooked judge? <laughs> when do we uh, get to put the judge on trial for corruption? I'm sure it'll come. Um, the issue is we're really short-staffed on judges, which is why they have the three-day limit on court cases so they can get as many court cases through as possible. Yeah, the judge isn't corrupt, he's an idiot. But no one else wants to be a judge, apparently. That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoe tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then, after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's speciality, erasing evidence. That reminds me, Miss Skye's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe. Well, <clears throat> well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. M Mr. Wright, do something, please. B what? What could I do? Uh, if she was holding the knife in her right hand, how did she cut her right hand? Seems a bit weird. <laughs> Give it to Wright, he can't do any worse. Well, he can. <laughs> what could I do? Your sister's confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it. Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution's side. She could have been lying about the water. Bang. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Hold it. Boom, ba boom. Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? M me? Did you just say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution's side? Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid, hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well, I thought you had your had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called Evidence. Wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. Objection! Objection. <laughs> Bloody hell. This sodding court case. <laughs> Day one will never end. <laughs> the time for deliberations is past. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough-up queen. Look at this. It's a photograph. It is. Yeah, wonderful. A photograph? I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. But, Mr. Wright, wait! Look at this asphalt in this photo! Hey, it's clearly wet. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I... I I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I... I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. Get back. Don't worry, you've missed the witness putting forward seven pieces of evidence they didn't tell anyone else about. <laughs> this is just day one. You yeah, right. saw something. A sock. Uh. Hmm. I'm sorry, Mia. Da da da. Da da da. Da da da. Yeah. Right. Wet or not. Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Hmm. Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. Uncle Ben, how much do you know about cars? Bugger all. This is the last piece of evidence. Bang. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. While you're doing that, let me just have a look at this picture. Um. Uh, wait, hang on. Do I have the picture? 
I didn't have the big chin. Okay. okay. Objection! Bang! <laughs> Your Honor, wait! What is it with you people? Can I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? <laughs> no! You're terrible at your job. Whatever it is, can it wait? N n no, it can't. Then it'll be too late. Look. Look at this photograph. The last one submitted. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. I'll think later. <laughs> yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, sh we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem with this photograph. What's going on there? Uh... What is this? <laughs> Hell yeah, forget thinking. You were never good at that. <laughs> um... Oh, that's a muffler. Oh, is that what that is? Oh, muffler. Oh, the. Oh, I see. Okay, we would call it an exhaust pipe, which is makes something slightly confusing. <laughs> uh, but I'm th it, still get quite interested in this. <laughs> Bang! The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor? You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. <laughs> Slow blinking. <laughs> Staring at the judge. Do I have to deal with this? <laughs> 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 a muffler is also part of a car or a motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as... Part of the exhaust system. A pipe. I see. And... I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm. So what if that is something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Objection. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, Ms. Starr, but it's not going to be all that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. <laughs> what? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth and the muffler is related to this case. Uh. What, what, what do I what do I have? Yeah, there we are. The word muffler was over. I was wondering where in my evidence that was. <laughs> Miss Star. Recall your testimony for the court. Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler. Nah, nah. Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? You're a terrible investigator. If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh! Ooh. And then she fell over and died. Well, it seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. Sus suspend I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. <laughs> this is the first time you've ever thought that, Judge. <laughs> Bloody hell. But as hasty as possible to skip past any piece of information you don't immediately understand. Also, you almost think my flows are part of the exhaust system. Cool, cool. Um, have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? Hmm. I suppose so. Huh. <sighs> that was close. But we made it. At least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry. He was stuff in his face the entire time. To be continued. This was just day one. We're still on day one. We're just having a 30 minute recess. <laughs>
Uh, let's save. We can do the recess before stopping. Um... Luckily, none of the gruff-voiced characters in this one, so I can go longer. <laughs> February 23... 23... 23rd. 11.56am, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Um, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Sorry, I was thinking about something else. Are trials always like this with you? Like, you're swimming up from the bottom of a lake about to reach the surface, but no matter how hard you paddle, you never seem to get there. Uh, pretty much. Except today, we're swimming in quicksand. So, what's happened to your sister, anyway? Apparently she got called off to the judge's chambers. Hmm, probably something to do with that piece of cloth. So, this is where we turn this trial around, right? Can we have pancakes for lunch? Yes. <laughs> Our only weapon, a tiny, insignificant piece of cloth. I'm the one who's starting to feel tiny and insignificant, to tell the truth. Oh god, is this is it this guy speaking of gruff voices? Hola, partner. Yeah. They say you show a red cloth to a bull, it'll fire up its temper. That's what they told me when I was a young'un, at least. Officer Marshall! Thought I'd come take a look, see how the trial's going. Looks like I'm late. Yeah, this this is a um I think at the moment just a beat cop used to be an investigator. A lot of people getting fired from it being an investigator. Um, a detective investigator person. Cowboy. Not a cowboy. He comes from LA. Um, <laughs> don't know what's going on with him. They got the home ranch locked down tighter than a fort in an enemy territory. That's that hard to slip out, huh? What's going on over there anyway? All the police I've seen these last two days have been really on edge. Don't you got enough on your plate without worrying about other people, compadre? You could be worrying about the chief prosecutor's taste and mufflers, for example. Um, Officer Marshall? The whole muffler thing didn't have anything to do with scarves. She wasn't even wearing a scarf. Hmm. I bet that's what the cloth is. <laughs> you don't say. Now, don't that just beat all? Hmm? I've seen the red breeze blow at her slender neck many a time. I saw it that day, too. She was wearing a red muffler. What? At the awards ceremony that afternoon, Edward's seen it too, I reckon. What does that mean? In the photograph taken at the crime scene, she wasn't wearing a scarf. So, a Miss Star wasn't mistaken. Well, it's about time. Remember, partner, sometimes you gotta grab the bull by the horns. And sometimes you just gotta let that bull go where it will. Time will tell. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Very bad at shaving, though, <laughs> yes. So, are we swimming in... What are we swimming in now, Mr. Wright? And if it's steak sauce, I can hook you up with some fine ribs. Hooey! You're weird. February 23rd, 12.32 p.m. District Court, courtroom number nine. Nine! Rumble, 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 rumble. I'd like to resume. I would like to stop. Take that, Judge. I have control over this proceedings here. I know it's slightly early, but it feels very weird to start five minutes of a court case. <laughs> so... Apologies for the slightly early end. Didn't quite line up today. Um, but hey, we'll get there. Shush game. Um, but ye, I hope you're enjoying. I hope you're keeping track, because I'm not. Um, <laughs> it, feel, it feels like a good time, because that's probably going to go on a while. I give that ooey a six out of four. That's good. Oh, six out of ten. Uh. <laughs> I'm not a cowboy. I don't know these things. It's been five minutes waffling. I don't know how to waffle. I've never waffled once before in my life. I can I can gerrymander, but that's a different thing. Um. What's that thing? Okay, random question. Very random question. I, it, we have a general election coming up here. I'm going to waffle for a bit. General election coming up here. 
uh, and I've just found out that our area has changed. Uh, we are no longer in the borough of the city I live next to. We are now in the borough of a city that lives that is quite far away from us. <laughs> What's the word when politicians do that? It has a word. I've forgotten what it is, where they change boundary lines to give them a better chance at winning an election. I thought it was gerrymandering, but it was something else. Nightmare doll? What? Who? Rezoning? I, th I thought it had a specific word. Like when you do it for political reasons. They keep changing ours too, yeah. Thought it was part of gerrymandering too? I'm gonna look it up. This is an exciting part of the stream. Uh, yes, it is gerrymandering, yeah. In representative electoral systems, gerrymandering is a political manipulation of electoral district boundaries with the intent to create undue advantage for a party, group, or socioeconomic class within the constituency. So what's the other thing, then? What, what's the thing where you talk too much? Specifically in politics. <laughs> gerrymandering is changing, yeah, so I was right. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go and tell the person I was talking to about this that I was right. <laughs> it was gerrymandering. But yeah, what's the word where you, where you like, stand up in, uh, you know, the political system or whatever, and you just talk for a really long time, so long that the thing that's supposed to happen next can't happen. Filibustering, that's the one. Thank you, Bert. Gerrymandering and filibustering. I always get the two words mixed up, but I was right on this occasion that gerrymandering was the one I wanted. Hooray! <clears throat> but I was wrong earlier when I said that um, I'm good at gerrymandering. I'm not good at gerrymandering. I don't know anything about borders, but filibustering, that's something else. I'm also not great at that, but that is uh, not relevant. Um, both good words, though. They're fun. Fun words. Need more words with that sort of gerrymandering, filibustering, just lots of syllables bouncing around. Good times. Uh, but yes, in terms of streams, I should probably do my usual chat thereof. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow morning with continuing drawing June, who's getting there very, very... A fashionable June. Um, yes, hopefully we'll be able to finish that. It shouldn't take too long. It depends how easily I can render something that looks like fur. It's not fur, but it's, you know. Um, fake fur. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's real fur. Maybe they have a friend who's a very furry monster who, you know, has fur that molts and they use that. Um, they're looking great, hopefully. Um, I also did a doodle of my, um, or a, a, a quick overpaint of the doodle I did of my uh, new RPG character, Acton. Um, having a monch of a pie that's in the Discord. Um, I wanted something slightly, you know, <laughs> with a little bit more time spent on it than the doodle I did yesterday. Not yesterday. Monday. Uh, love him, wanna hug him. Yeah. He would also want to hug you, but would also be very awkward in the process. <laughs> um, but ye! So yes, Thursday, tomorrow morning, doodles times Saturday morning, also doodle times Saturday evening. It says Wildermyth there. Not Wildermyth. I believe the plan is that we're going to be playing the Lord of the Rings Online MMO. Because um, it's free and it looks kind of uh, fun and silly. Um, I have installed it and will be messing around with it probably at some point tomorrow um but yeah get through the tutorial and then we can wander around the shire or whatever i don't know nothing the pro problem is i mostly know lord of the rings through memes i think i've seen the first film and that's about it <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna have to um memes and uh over analyzing the costumes for the uh the prequel amazon show with Cheeb. Um, back for the fifth time, just in time for the end. Yeah, we're waffling about political systems and Lord of the Rings. Welcome back. Um, hey, yeah. I think we'll be fine. We just need, uh, like, one person to be a tank. Yeah, should we w work out, like, classes and stuff, just in case we need it? I mean, I'm always tempted to become the support. That's just... I say that as if I have ever played an MMO before, but... In my RPG experience, <laughs> being a support is always a nice time. 
Waffles! I'm surprisingly in bed! In bed. The best time for waffles. Eat waffles in bed. Um, with a plate, so you don't get crumbs everywhere. I still still haven't tried a Belgian waffle. I need to try a Belgian waffle. I only have potato ones. There is a bard class, which is a healer support. I think I'm alright doing an MMO as a bard. I'm not, you know... Bard in an RPG requires a certain level of personal charisma that I don't have. <laughs> or certain, a certain improvisational charisma. Um, but we'll see. Uh... Think you picked bear against your better judgment? Oh, bard. You should pick bard against your better judgment. That still could be fun. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna take I'm gonna go vibes. See what I see what's there and just go. Yeah, this could be fun. Um, I don't even know what species I'm gonna be or race. Is it race or species? I don't know. I guess it won't be species because you can have like half elves. I think that's the definition of a species, isn't it? That they can breed. Six bard team, go! God, absolute disaster. Um, they're very fun ones. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into it. Is is there any particular like instance or world we need to get into? That was a thing I saw that was there before I got scared and did something else. Um, <laughs> or can we swap at any time and it doesn't matter? I have no idea what all the classes are, and we'll also go on vibes unless we need certain classes and don't already have it. Maybe you used half an hour picking race and class. Maybe an hour. I, obviously, you're going to play an MMO. You want to get the right character and feel good with them. You've got to try these things on for size, you know? Oh, Dark has given us uh, handy lists. With a bear foot. Not, not a bear foot. A bear f foot of a bear. <clears throat> um, yeah. Character creation is, is important in an RPG. Particularly in something like Dark Souls. Very important to spend a lot of time on a character that you will never see. Um, <clears throat> you can swap, I'll put what's over to play in the Discord. Nice! Cool, cool. Your foot? Uh, it might be your foot, I don't know. Uh, not an expert on your foot. Um. <laughs> we so we won't end up with ten bards. <laughs> we might end up with ten bards, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so we'll be doing that on Saturday. Uh, chill, Lord of the Rings nonsense. I have, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but I've never played an MMO. But it's a game with friends, so what can what could possibly go wrong? Um, but yeah, there's that. Uh, Sunday doodle times with friends, and then it all comes round again. Back to more of this nonsense. Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Um. Uh, I think you just changed your hunter's hair and eyes when you created her for Bloodborne and that was it. <laughs> Bloodborne's one isn't as uh, big of a thing, I think. I don't, know if it, I don't know if it's more limited. I don't know. I, f I feel like I've, most of the weird creations and Souls games have happened in Dark Souls or Elden Ring. So Sekiro obviously is just a character. Um, silly fantasy jank times. I'm here for that. I also like how like you, you go and download the Lord of the Rings RPG and it's like it's like 800 megabytes. Great. Real like incredibly quick downloads. Brilliant. And then it says, do you want to install like high texture, uh, res high resolution textures and stuff like that? And you're like, sure, that'll be 36 gigabytes. <laughs> I love that. Brilliant. Um, created Priscilla from Witcher 3. Ooh, I don't know who that is. And I'm imagining Priscilla from Dark Souls. So very floofy. Um, would have played Aradorn, but the ranger doesn't have any poison, even with traps. No poison? What? Terrible game. We're not playing it. We're going to play Raft. Um, love her. You'll post a song. Yeah, post things. High res is like four to six gig or something. I think it said it was that, but it downloaded so much. <laughs> it was weird. But ye. More to look forward to with that on Saturday evening. Um, although I will have to do preparation in advance. Uh, thinking on it, the only MMO with a lot of poison is Elder Scrolls Online. That's fair. There is poison in the base game of that. Makes sense. Or in the uh, solo games of that. We could do the Skyrim multiplayer mod. 
It could be something we could do. I mean, I'd have to buy a newer version of Skyrim because I only have the original. But uh, anyway, 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 anyway. I'm going to leave now uh, and I'm going to get ready for in about an hour, I think, is the final episode of Inside Number Nine. And I'm very excited because I know absolutely nothing about it because they haven't said anything about it. <laughs> could be very underwhelming. Don't know. But uh, still excited. I will ramble about it tomorrow, I'm sure. <laughs> Great, but Massive Gigabytes and has uh, the too much to do problem. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, very happy so far, the Lord of the Rings. Uh, Mum doesn't have cute, silly things making you want to fall out of the fantasy. Uh. Ramble all about it. Hope it's awesome. I, I, I don't know what to expect. With them, you never know what to expect. But the fact that they have deliberately not said anything... I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> Final episode. Yeah, I, I guessed it was supposed to be MMO. And now I realise that MMO is an anagram of mom. Not here anyway, it'll be MMU. Uh, but anyway. Bloody bloody blah. Everybody go and have a lovely evening, slash afternoon, slash whatever time zone it is. Um, and I'll be back at times previously stated, because I'm not particularly good at uh, doing these things in a concise form. Concision is not my uh, forte, but it's fine. Also, what am I going to play to end? I don't know. Jose Feliciano is always a good bet. Have a good one, everyone. Enjoy. Have a good one. Yes, have a good one every night. Around you see. Bye.